As many of you already know, today should have been the opening day of the 10th Review Conference of State Parties to the Treaty on the Non-Proliferation of Nuclear Weapons, or NPT. Unfortunately, the current extraordinary circumstances we are all facing have forced the postponement of the Review Conference. The COVID-19 pandemic has wrought havoc on our lives, economies and societies. It is possibly the greatest test of our time, one that I'm sure we can overcome through unity, compassion and perseverance. My heart and solidarity are with all those individuals and states suffering through this crisis. The decision to postpone the review conference was not an easy one for NPT state parties to take, but it was the only one possible. We are now working together to find the best alternative dates, those that will allow the review conference to carry out its vital work across all three of the NPT's pillars. The pandemic has shown us all that global crisis cannot be addressed by any one country alone. A collective response is required. I'm hopeful that the lessons we are learning during these trying times will translate to other issues of global significance. Because as turbulent as these times are, and as much as we must make defeating the pandemic our utmost priority, make no mistake, the dangers of nuclear weapons and the challenges to the non-proliferation regime remain. The review conference, whenever it is held, will still be the primary opportunity for state parties to engage in the necessary dialogue to address those issues and seek ways to ensure those who need it to have access to the peaceful uses of nuclear energy. The postponement of the 10th Review Conference was unfortunate, but it can also be an opportunity. I encourage state parties to use this hiatus to work together to develop areas of convergence and ideas to strengthen the NPT so that it remains fit for purpose as the cornerstone of the disarmament and non-proliferation regime while ensuring the benefits of peaceful uses of nuclear energy and a pillar of international peace and security. I know some state parties, together with civil society, are already engaging in virtual events to generate momentum in the lead up to the review conference. I welcome all these efforts. The Bureau and I are also having virtual meetings on a weekly basis to discuss preparations for the review conference. As president designate, I'm fully determined to continue my consultations with states parties to seek their views and ideas and to stay engaged with civil society. When the review conference takes place, we must be ready to do our best to hold a successful conference that enhances all of our security. I look forward to working with you all in this endeavor. In the meantime, I hope that you and your loved ones will continue to take the necessary precautions and remain safe and healthy.